This video is brought to you by Vinshine Audio in Singapore, worldwide distributions of the famous Denifrips and Kinky Studio audio file components. Vinshine Audio subscribes to direct to consumer model to keep their prices low and to deliver high end premium components directly to your door without the premium cost. Visit vinshineaudio.com slash shop or kinky studio.com slash shop to learn more. So one of the more common questions I get on this channel is how does this Tecton speaker compare to this Tecton speaker? Which Tecton speaker is right for me? And it makes sense because they offer so many different speakers on their websites, many, many models and many customizations available that it can get very confusing on which speaker is right for you. So in this video, I can't compare every speaker model, quite frankly, because there's so many and I just haven't heard them all, just like you. However, I think I'm the single individual on YouTube that has heard Pendragon Double Impact in the 210s, the popular models. So in this video, I'm going to attempt to give you a better impression of what these speakers sound like and which Tecton speaker is right for you. So make sure to click that subscribe button and the bell notification so that you don't miss any of it. And let's get straight to it. Now, if this is your first time seeing a Tecton speaker, or even if this is not your first time like myself and have seen them multiple times, the first thing that really draws your attention is the tweeters on each of these speakers. There's seven of them on each. And that's quite a lot of tweeters. And let me explain what these do and why these make Tecton speakers special. Now, out of the seven tweeters, the outer six is the mid-range, and one in the middle is the actual true tweeter, which does the high frequency. And Tecton calls this the polycell tweeter array. So the tweeters on the outside is replacing a mid-range driver. So instead of one single mid-range driver, they're using six tweeters on the outside to do the mid-range driver's job. And there's few reasons they do this. One is efficiency. This allows the speaker to be much more efficient, in this case, 95 dB in sensitivity, according to Tecton. And as we know, a small tweeter moves faster than a big transducer like a woofer. And this is why it's used for the high frequencies, because it's more frequent, so it has to move faster. So the tweeter is good for that. This allows the array of you know, tweeters to move faster in such a way that it gives you a transient response that rivals some of the horns. So it's essentially trying to imitate a horn speaker without that honky horn effect that some people may hear. Now before, if you watch my Klipsch Forte review, which is also a horn design speaker, it is not a honky sounding horn. And I think horn speakers have come a long way to not sound honky and similar to that, the two tens are not honky speakers because they're not a horn design. However, they do have qualities of a horn speaker, which we'll, ex we'll explain in this video. But the similarity between the Klipsch 44 and the two tens are pretty gnarly. They're quite close. Well, the only difference being that the Tecton 210 speakers are much less expensive speakers, priced around 2,100 USD, including shipping and in-home trials. I believe they offer a generous period of 60-day in-home trials. I could be wrong or that could change, so make sure to always check the manufacturer's website instead of taking my word for it on that one. Now the Tecton 210 SCT speakers also feature two 10-inch drivers. And these drivers are also unique in the fact that they are actually pro drivers. They're used for bass guitars and also is seen on the Pendragon and also the Double Impact. And in fact, it's called the Pendragon 10-inch transducer. It is a specifically modified version of the Pro driver that is made specifically for Tecton speakers from my understanding. Now, one of the key ingredients in the secret sauce to Tecton speakers is not only the tweeter array, but also the crossover to allow the slope 
to cross over evenly when using so many tweeters. And with this all together, essentially what you get is a sound that you really don't see too much or at all from a transducer design. It sounds much like a horn speaker, but at the si same time has the authority and the bass and kind of that you know, midsection and hybrid between a traditional boxed speaker and a horn speaker, which is very unique. In fact, one of the first speakers that came to my mind when I heard these speakers was the Klipsch Forte Force. The resemblance was very, very similar. And the fact that how it projected and how it surrounded you with soundstage and depth was just very similar to the Klipsch Forte Force. It was extremely good. The soundstage is large width and depth and sound is three-dimensional just like a horn speaker. And if I closed my eyes, I almost mistook it for a horn speaker. Except for one thing. This speaker is not as bright or as shrill as the Klipsch Forte 4 on the high frequency. And depending on the tone of these speakers, you can adjust it just like the Klipsch Forte 4 to make it sound less bright by towing them out towards the room. Or if you want a little bit more of a sharper sound, you can tow them towards you. And unlike the Klipsch Forte 4s, which used a passive radiator design, this speaker is ported, but I found that moving it close to the wall behind it didn't exactly make it boomy or unlistenable. In fact, if you're in a smaller space and want a big speaker, these speakers do an excellent job in my opinion. Now, another thing to note here is that these speakers also, again, is not as bright as the Klipsch Forte 4s were. So if you're a little bit more bright sensitive, these speakers may be the choice. However, let me note this. These speakers are still a little bit more brighter in comparison to something like the Pendragon or the Bacard S400. In fact, I put this speaker right in between the Pendragon and the double impact speakers in terms of its sound signature. And it's, the price range actually makes sense because it falls in right in between as well. The double impact, like I said, was a more referenced sound with high frequency that is quite refined and extended. While the Pendragon didn't exactly have that high frequency extension and excitement, but was more of a gutty sound with bass authority extending low and a more warmer and tasteful mid-range. And the two tens are a little bit in between. The high frequency, like I said, has excitement, but not too bright, at least for me. And it projects in a way that is kind of like a horn speaker in the high frequency. And the mid-range is beautiful, but has gut to the sound and full sounding, just like the Pendragon. And the bass is really impactful, grunts, and has that really muscular sound, just like the Pendragon. So if you were someone that listened to the Pendragon and found everything you liked, but the high frequency was just a little bit not extended enough for you, this speaker may be it. Now, if you listen to the double impact and you found the high frequency to be too extended, too a little bit too bright, and also you know the bass in the double impact extends linearly, not so much a grunt. So if you wanted a little bit more grunt with a little bit of less high frequency emphasis, then the Tecton 210s are the right choice for you in my opinion. And lastly, if you like tubes, this speaker is definitely for you. Now, while I do have to admit that both Double Impacts and Pendragons and virtually most of Tecton speakers are great with tube amplifiers or low wattage solid state amplifiers because of its high sensitive rating and how sensitive they are, I have to say that the 210s by far is the best choice with tube amplifiers by far. When I paired the 210s with something like, for example, the Wilsonton R800i that I reviewed, or something single-ended, trialed, or you know, a low wattage tube amplifier, it just sounded so good. The soundstage got just so much bigger, the mid-range, more flesh, more texture, and when listening to male vocals or female vocals, the voice has gut to the sound and chestiness that is just right. It is not too much to make it sound like, you know, kind of chocolatey or, you know, too nasty, but it's chesty enough to give you that chest impact. You feel it in your chest of the singer's, you know, voice. And when it comes to speakers like this that has great grunt and really that, you know, gutty, chesty voices. Sometimes the bass is not as hard hitting, you know, especially with tube amplifiers, but this speaker is 
incredibly hard hitting. You feel it in your chest, every punch. You feel the punch in your chest and in your body. And the extension is quite satisfying as well. Now, I wouldn't say that it extends as low as the double impact or the pen dragon, but the extension is quite enough for most rooms. And I find that it is quite satisfying and warm sounding. Now, with this being said, the strings, on the other hand, you know, um, you know, with stuff that has a little bit of a higher pitched sound, like a string, violin, you know, guitar, whatever it is, piano, the high frequency, you know, that openness really opens up the sound stage, and you hear the strings vibrating, and you feel the space. The separation is quite good on the speaker as well. I really don't have much complaint with the speaker, as you can probably tell. The separation is quite good. I mean, it's not as pinpoint as like a Focal or a Magical speaker, but that's not something you would expect from a speaker like this. I, I find that the sparkliness and the separation in the soundstage given is really, really pinpoint for a speaker, you know, that has that kind of horn sound. I don't think I have heard any horn speaker that comes close to the separation and imaging that these speakers provide. The center imaging is very, very good as well. Now, I wouldn't say it's as good as a standard, you know, um, box speaker with one transducer or one tweeter, but I would say that it gets very close and for a full, you know, basically a full range sound, I think that is a trade off that I'm willing to accept. Now, like I have mentioned with equipment matching, this speaker is a very sensitive speaker, so it is great with many components. It's not just great with tube amplifiers, but if you're getting this speaker, I don't see why not get a tube amplifier because it just sounds so good with it. And I believe that actually the SET line was designed to be mated with a tube amplifier. So two main tube amplifiers I have used, and it's the Fez Audio, and the Wilsonton R800i. And both of them very much provide a very clean, dynamic, a fun sound. I wouldn't call this a reference sound. If you're more for a reference sound, I think the double impact is more for you, like I said. But this sounded just so engaging, yet full sounding. It did so many things right, checked off so many boxes in my, you know, what to look for in a speaker. Great bass authority, check. You know, great tone and mid-range presence, check. High frequency, open, extended, you know, great sound stage, great imaging, great separation, you know, not too bright, check. Just absolutely incredible. And to make it even better, the equipment matching is extremely easy as well because a good tube amplifier is really all you need in my opinion with this speaker. Now, one pairing that I would suggest you try because I haven't, but I think it is a great match in my mind is actually the first watt amplifiers. I think the F7 or the F8, you know, the low wattage amplifiers that give you that kind of tubey sound will mate well with these speakers. Now, for what it's worth, every time I hear a Tecton speaker, I am just amazed how much they provide for the money. It is extreme value and something that you don't really hear in this kind of price range. Now there is obviously a trade-off, and the trade-off is that the finish is not going to be as nice as you know a speaker that costs 10 times more. That is absolutely true. But in terms of sound, the sound rivals just that, in my opinion, with all of the Tecton speakers that I have that I have heard so far. It has never failed me once. So if you're okay with the looks, and if your spouse is okay with the looks, then I think that this speaker is an extremely good choice. And to make matters even easier, if you need a different color or a different finish, customization, they do offer that now on their website, which is a big plus in my opinion. So that's pretty much it for me for this video. If this video was helpful to you, please click that like button. It doesn't cost you anything and it does help us a lot. And also consider supporting us on our Patreon to keep us independent and keep these unbiased reviews coming. Thank you and until next time.